Thanks so much for the introduction. Actually, the introduction after Ernesto should have been, um, and now comes the stupid guy. Not because I uh, came to 6,000 instead of 4,100, because I spent 16 years at Cisco building telco networks. And let me tell you one thing. It's interesting that all these stupid guys, like Ernesto, myself, actually are coming to the energy sector, which means there's something happening here. So I'm trying to be a sort of a bit upbeat on this one um, to, to go forward. Now, as you come from the outside, there's a couple of things on innovation, and I'll go back to Ernesto just for you. I mean, I, I was one of the few young engineers building the first data uh, networks on mobile. And a lot of our prediction of what the innovation would be, mesh, didn't happen. Uh, batteries, who, I'll do an Ernesto. How many of you actually have a phone which battery lasts longer than a day? Just raise your, yeah, all right. So see, the reality is batteries don't last three to four weeks, which is something which we were predicting. So the only thing you can predict is that you don't know what's going to come. So that's the, the one thing I, I, I want to say about this. Now, the second thing I also want to tell you is when you come from the outside, I've been 16 years at Cisco, I'm six months in this industry, I look at you, and especially the utilities, all I can say is you work very, very hard. You work very, very hard. Over the last five years, I'm just looking at Germany, from 1,500 hours you needed to spend to stabilize the grid, you're now spending 16,400 hours just in Germany to stabilize the grid. So whatever is happening to this industry, it makes you work harder and earn less money, which is not the right thing to, to go in, in, in this direction. And the reality, and, and we just heard about the US, there's more and more large outages which are happening, right? If you look at, I just visited the president of Taiwan, she switched off her nuclear power plants, she had an outage of a couple of, of hours. There's been outages in the US, Uganda, all around the world. So there's something happening between the world of where everybody has its own charging batteries and phones to the reality of which you live today, which is how do I deal with a complexity which is coming? So what we tr try to do is, can we actually try and predict the future? So we went with the, um, and it's, a, it's a quite a complex one, which is actually quite fun if you look at it. We try to think about Germany, which is in a given, it had a huge change in its network. And we said, what happens if we go 10 years from now and we had 50% renewables? What happens if we go to 80% renewables? And there's a couple of things you observe if you look at it. The red sort of bars, this is a full day. The red full bars are basically an overcapacity of energy. And the blue bars is basically there's not enough energy where it needs to be. So a couple of things you, you realize is the wind doesn't blow always at the same stage. Um, Germany has less sun than Italy, but basically Germany put a lot of sun PV capabilities, even if it doesn't have the sun. So we need to be able to stabilize these new sort of energy areas. And where the consumption of energy happens and where the production of energy happens rarely coincide. And that's what a utility needs to solve. I've just been to China to meet Geitko. I don't know if you know Geitko. But Geitko basically said, the reality of renewables, they are very abundant exactly where they're not needed. They're very abundant in the desert. They're very abundant in the North Sea. But that's not where energy is being consumed. So we still have a couple of problems. We have an instability in the network, which is happening because it changes over the days, changes over which sort of period of time we're in. We have basically an incapacity because you need to transport and store that energy. So there's really sort of this change is happening. And, and we talked about this three Ds. So the first thing, and I agree, we will live in a decarbonized world. We, for example, at Siemens says that by 20 20, we will have a 50% reduced carbon footprint. By 2030, we would have zero emission company. So everybody will go this way. But this changes dramatically because you go from f f fossils to renewables and storage. We talked about storage. Also, the centrally energy production, we're going to go decentralized. I like this. It wasn't even called decentralized. It was What was the name you gave for this? It was quite uh, nice distributed. Very much like a, a, a telco network. And then the other thing which you have is it needs to be digitized. So what does it actually mean? It means that you need to do three things. I always say there's three things which change. From the telco and IT industry which I came from, they, I always tell people there's three things which change. One is technology. Can the technology be done? Second one is, is the business model there? 
And then what I always say is China also changes the world. If China decides to go in a certain direction, it does change the world. Is it renewables, cost of PV? Is it the way storage is done? Is it e-vehicles? So the first question, I, and I've I shown you the problem we have where energy is produced and energy is consumed, even if we don't need in 2020 or 2030 or 2040 any transmission, I still believe we need transmission, and the transmission we need needs to be, I, I call it lossless, but it's actually less loss. So a, a lot of you basically used HVDC to transport, in Germany, for example, from the northern parts where we produce energy to Munich, where, for example, or, or the southern parts where it needs to be consumed. Now, the one, the first thing we came up with, and, and with you together, is to say, it's not only over large distances we need to tr uh, uh, transport DC uh, current, we also need to have it in small sort of um, uh, environments. So we need sort of in, um, in areas where you basically have decentralized microgrids. You need to be able to connect them also with less loss technologies, which is like um, medium voltage DC s solutions. So the first one is how do you solve the problem to take energy from where it's produced to where it's needed? You take it over large distance, but you also take it over smaller type distance. The second one, and that's where we need to agree or disagree, is um, the storage problem is probably the biggest problem we need to address. Now, the problem is, is when you have your car, and that's where it's interesting, you need to understand, um, do you want somebody else to decharge and charge the car before you use it? When, do you know when you're going to use your car? Sometimes you might, sometimes you're not. So the one thing we looked at is to basically look at, can we, and we created a joint venture at Siemens, can we build a capability to, b to make storage part of the network. And this is just a physical example. These are huge storage banks which we use. But I agree, we could use BTSs from telco providers or we could use uh, Google's um, um, batteries. It's the same problem. You need to integrate that battery capability into the grid. I'll give you an example. When a blackout happens, the biggest problem you have is that you have this great amount of equipment, which is the gas turbine, if it starts to sort of decelerate, it produces so much energy that it actually creates a huge wear and tear. So you need basically storage to absorb that, um, that, that extra capacity. And then when you have an outage, you need to sort of black start this capability. It can come out from, from, from batteries, but in the meantime, it also needs the batteries to sort of start the gas turbine to be able to bring it back on. So the first one is really, I need to transport with the least amount of loss, the most efficient way, energy. And the second one, I need to store it to be able to actually balance this grid until it basically has the perfect nirvana. So that's the second thing which we need to look at. The third one, and that's also very important, is at the moment, if I look at your industry coming from where I, I come from, it's, I'm trying to find a nice word, it's pretty dumb. Right? There's not a much amount of knowledge you have besides your central transmission. If you go into low voltage, medium voltage, there's not a amount of data. Only 10% of the substation in Germany, for example, are connected. So the question is, is can we actually opening up those substation and make them intelligent? So if we're capable of transporting energy with the least amounts of loss possible, if we're capable of storing it to be able to sort of balance the grid, and if we're capable of having the intelligent data to be able to play with it, we will have technical capabilities to actually solve some of the problems which make you work so hard. Now, the second part, and that's the interesting part, is I talked about business models. The reality is all of you have big investors which want to get a payback. So how do you make money? And uh, my next slide is actually a slide which was uh, I was not supposed to show you. Because it is basically, I was said, if you show this to utilities, it's the devil. It's a blockchain solution we built in Brooklyn as Siemens, where somebody with its overcapacity of their PV can share it with fundamentally the uh, fridge of their neighbors using blockchain type of technology. I compare that change a bit to what happened with Napster. I don't know, you all remember Napster? Napster, my, my brother-in-law is a musician is the worst thing which happened to him, right? When Napster came, complete peer-to-peer, -peer, you didn't need any of the music industry, you didn't need any of the musician to be able to, to do something, and it distributed. However, the Napster peer-to-peer -peer technology was some technology which was abso absolutely necessary to drive it forward. 
What actually changed this industry was the creation of a platform. So the one mantra which the industry I came from was that you need to be able to build platforms to build business models. So the first thing every one of you will do is to build your own platform. You build a platform and you basically will connect your applications to this platform. You will make, I don't know, applications like connectivity, what is your assets, uh, what is the infrastructure looking at, uh, what are your grid edge devices. But the reality is if you build a platform which only solves one problem, which is the problem, is this like if Apple would have stopped at the iPod, just do music? It's not enough. You need to think forward. You need to be very good and very deep. That's one thing which I disagree with. Your 20 years of knowledge of knowing what happens with the industrial environment in the electrical environment is very valuable if you build a platform to build these applications which are much more efficient. But what you need to do, and, and uh, the previous speaker talk, uh, talked about it, this platform needs to connect also to other industries. So in the case of Siemens, we built trains. We uh, merged merger of equals with Alstom. We have with Gamesa, the largest renewable wind producer in the world. We are the number one automation provider in the world in terms of factories. We want to link a factory with a utility. We want to link a train or a metro environment with a utility. We want to link the production of energy to this platform. So the idea is, is if you have a platform which you can optimize to run your network, but you can also connect it with your customers, new customers, you actually build something to do and drive new business models. The reality is, is the Vodafone haven't won the fights of the telco, the Google have, the Facebook have. It's not the ones which owned the assets, even if they have lots of batteries, lots of phones, lots of base station. The actual owner are the ones which build a platform. And so that's why we built Mindsphere, and it's not to be only solving energy solution, we're going to announce this, but also to solve other problems and link them together. And I really liked one aspect which was very important. Whenever you build such a platform, it needs to be open. The biggest mistake everybody did in the telco industry is to build a closed platform solving one problem. When you build a platform, you need to have it as open as possible. You need to be able to integrate any sort of development as possible so that you can take your traditional customers, your traditional problems, solve them digitally. You can link it to new customers and then you can do something which you don't even sort of intend of looking at to be able to drive it forward. So, my first point was, yes, the future is going to look radically tougher for us than it does today, if all of the things, decarbonization, decentralization is happening. My second point is, you need to embrace technology and you need to build a platform to think of new business models, so not somebody else is building these new business models on your customers. It's interesting, actually, if you are Telecom Italia, your biggest fear is NL at the moment, as they're going back into the telecommunication environment. So the question is, is how, how do you become those? What, what do you embrace? And that's the, that's the example which I think also Ernesto was trying to do, is to say, if you look at the industry of energy, it looks very much like the IT and telco industry. We went from big fossil central plants, gas, photovoltaic, wind, to completely decentralized energy system. If you look at the internet, if the internet was, before the internet, it was telco systems were very central. The internet decentralized it. The mobile internet sort of took it and made it sort of much more active or much more sort of flexible. The cloud brought it back together, which is a very big important point. The platform, the idea of the cloud is that you have a platform which can go across multiple devices, multiple accesses. But what's now happening is that the industrial IoT, the idea of connecting everything in the energy sector, is going to radically change it. And the problem, and I don't know if the Cisco colleagues are here, if you look at Google Data Center at the moment, they, they have hundreds of thousands of servers. And their biggest problem was to have this as a, I'm going to ping my server to say if it's alive, to have the 100,000 servers talk to me constantly, sending me data. If your network becomes intelligent, you will have more data than a Vodafone will ever produce, than a Google will ever produce. You will have streaming telemetry. 
And the question is, is how are you going to deal with this data? Because the biggest asset you have is not only the lines you have to connect to your users, the billing relationships, is the capabilities to generate valuable data because it's constantly changing because of the renewable energy, because of the constantly changing need. And you sit like a spider in the web. If you're capable of taking this data, making intelligence out of it, and we need to, of course, be very, very mindful of consumer data, but if you're capable of bringing it together, you can create completely new businesses, completely new business models. So my, my aspect was, uh, Ernesto predicted that the utility might be dead by 2027. I say the death of the utility is premature, which is probably very easy to uh, say in, a, in an environment like this. But I completely agree with him that disruption will come and you need to embrace it. And not a single company can solve it on its own. So my point today was to say, we're trying to look at the future and see what's going to happen. We try to build technology to be able to solve the problems you have today whilst coming up with new ideas of making money. The most important part is you need to define what you want to be in the future and you need to build the foundations. You're going to have more data than anyone else and you have the capability to build a platform to extract and build new business models. So my invitation to you today is to say, all right, the utility as you knew it is dead. I agree. Innovation will change you. Are you going to work? Are we going to work together to be able to address it? And that's where I invite you to come over to our stands, but that's exactly the way, as, as we said at the beginning, it, you didn't call us a fool, you called us uh, uh, an idiot, right? I mean, whatever you called us, I think we have the future in our hands if we work together, and I'm looking forward to work with, you, with each one of you in this room. Thank you.